sing a joyful song, number 548, number 548. Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, welcome tonight, brothers and sisters, to this Mass of St. Lawrence. For those of you who are visitors, feel very welcomed at home here. Um, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we first do so by calling to mind our sins and asking the Lord for his love and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. a reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went on a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. And then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time. He touched him and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
It's a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God, as beloved children of God, and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it's that time of year with summer almost passing, and we can reminisce those great times out in the sun or out in the water, and. Perhaps you were tubing, and, or I remember someone tubing, where they got on the tube and there just wasn't enough water or there just wasn't enough air in the tube and the boat took off and whoosh, sunk into the water and the person I know took in all the water and was covered with seaweed. There just wasn't enough air. 
Or perhaps one of us has been in the situation where we um, didn't want to go out in the sun to get our tan, so we take the spray-on tan. We get, it's, in the, it's in the closet, and we pull it out, and we start spraying really systematically. And we got this part just awesome. But then all of a sudden, you're pushing, you're pushing, pushing. There's nothing coming out. <laughs> oh no, I still have half of my face to go. <laughs> and then you start to get a memory like Braveheart, you know, like ready for war because half of you is red and the other half isn't. And then it's like, oh no, I have to go to the store. Boy, I wish I had enough instant tan. <laughs> Well, <laughs> or perhaps you have kids and you have three daughters like my brother and you have only two toys and you don't realize that you lost the third. And so you give out the first toy to the first girl, the second toy, and then you reach into your purse and you're like, uh-oh, I lost it. And then there's a two-year-old and she's like, mine, mine, mine. And you're like, oh no. And you say to your husband, go get it, quick, find it. And we just need to have enough. And that's what happened to you, to Elijah in the first reading. So if we recall from Kings, Elijah was sent to King Ahab and Jezebel and to their prophets, the 450 prophets. And they had this contest of who were the true prophets. And we saw that Elijah won the contest. Their, his sacrifice started on fire, whereas the 450 prophets, they couldn't get their false god to start their sacrifice on fire. And they ended up being killed by the sword because they lost. And so after that contest, even though he won, Elijah is threatened by Jezebel, the queen of, of the king, the king's wife. And she says, I'm going to kill you like you killed all those prophets. Elijah gets scared. He feels like, this, I gave them everything I had. And they're still coming after me. I don't have enough. And so we heard he goes to this broom tree, lays underneath it, and wishes that he would just die. And God said, no, I have enough. And so what does he do? He sends an angel. And the angel wakes up Elijah and says, eat. And he gives him bread to eat. And he goes back to sleep and he, he's woken up again and said, eat, else the journey will be too long for you. And so he got up, ate, and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. Why did God want him to eat and live? Because God wanted to meet him on the mountain. God gave him food for the journey so that they could meet each other. If we put one and one together, we get two. And we look at Elijah and then we look at the gospel today. And Jesus says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. If you eat me, eat this bread, you will live forever. You will have eternal life. And so Jesus is giving us an even better bread for the journey, his body and blood in Holy Communion. That's why when a person, when they're about to die and they receive Holy Communion, we call it viaticum, which is translated food for the way, food for the journey. It's to help us get to heaven. But we can't treat John 6 today, or the Eucharist, like an insurance policy, like some contract that says, I went to Mass every Sunday, received Holy Communion every Sunday, therefore, I get a ticket into heaven. God wants so much more than that. God did not give us his body and blood just to give this, this free ticket to heaven. He gave us his life so that he could be in relationship with you and me, a covenantal relationship. And we see that in one word, or well, two words. It's a, it's a verbal clause in the, first read, in, the, in the gospel. Jesus says, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. In Greek, it's one word, dozo, but in English, it's two words, will, give, the future tense of give. So when Jesus is saying that to the people, he's referring to a, a very personal act, 
Because where will he give his body and blood? In John chapter 19, on the cross. He gives us his life. He gives each and every one of us his life. And most importantly, he gives his life to his Father on our behalf. And so when we receive communion, it's not just this viaticum, though it is. It's also Jesus inviting you and me into his life. And so we hear in the second reading from St. Paul, so be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love. We live in Christ. Jesus didn't come to give us the Eucharist to take us to the Father in heaven. Though he did, he did so much more. He gave us the Eucharist to make us the Father's sons and daughters and to let us live today, here and now, in the Father's love. The Father who says to each and every one of us, I love you, you are mine. And to give us the freedom to love him in return. And so my brothers and sisters, today as we receive Holy Communion, we offer our lives with Jesus and say, Jesus, I receive you and your gift of your body and blood, and I make a gift of mine to you and to the Father and to the world. And so as Jesus is a sacrifice poured out to the Father once and for all, and whom we offer today at this altar, we offer ourselves with him. You and I are living sacrifices. And we, through this Eucharist, are transformed. And so when we go to heaven, we're not something way different than the Father. Like, oh, there's Brian, da 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 da, da. there's whoever. Okay, yeah, you can come in. No, you and I, we are his beloved children who have been transformed into his likeness. Archbishop Fulton Sheen recounts a story that inspired him the rest of his life. In communist China, just after the overthrow of the government, the communists came in and they kicked out all the priests and in one particular parish, they went to the priest and they beat him and put him in house arrest. And so the priest was in his house looking out the window and he saw the soldiers go in, rip open the tabernacle, cast out the ciborium, and scatter the hosts on the floor, the Eucharist, and steal the sacred vessels. And they locked up the church. The priest was horrified, Archbishop Sheen recounts. And so he spent up all day, all night, praying and adoring the Blessed Sacrament from his window. And at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night, a little girl around the age of 11 snuck up to the church past the guards and in the window crawled into the sanctuary, got down on her hands and knees and worshiped Jesus in the Eucharist. And she lowered her mouth to the floor and with her tongue picked up the Holy Eucharist to receive her communion in adoration and love of Jesus. There was about 30 hosts on the floor and so for about 30 days, she came one day after another. And around the 30th or 32nd day, she, as she is bending down to receive Holy Communion, there was a fire of a gun and a guard rushed into the, into the chapel. And that little girl who had received the last consecrated host actually just received her viaticum and she became a martyr for Jesus Christ and his Eucharist. Her love for the Eucharist, her daily reception of Jesus, transformed her, only 11 years old, into a self-offering of love. My brothers and sisters, that's what you and I are called to, to live our lives in offering of love to God our Father through Jesus Christ. Gathered as one body of Christ, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
God is always at work in the world to provide for what we truly need and to bring us to a newer and fuller life in Christ. Mindful of this, let us join in offering our prayers to our loving Father in heaven. For Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, and deacons, may they continue to inspire the faithful to live, to live lives devoted to God. We pray to the Lord. For those who are struggling with their faith, especially after a painful event, may they open their hearts to the workings of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those in our world who are suffering in war-torn areas and feeling hopeless, may they find comfort in the compassion and care of our merciful God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For members of our families and members of this faith community, May they always place great trust in the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, marked with the sign of faith, may they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially for Alice Ishide family, Ralph and Ida Hoffman, Kevin Miners, Jean Neeland family, and Jean Horscholst, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you trusting that you know our needs better than we do. Hear and answer these prayers according to your will. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing, I Receive the Living God, number 349, number 349.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of this name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Amen. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, and in joyful celebration we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Lawrence, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with Francis our Pope and Walker our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Please join in singing our communion song, Take and Eat, number 366, number 366. <sighs> Oh, 
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have one announcement. Let's see. So tomorrow, Sunday, August 9th, from 5 to 7, in Collison Hall, adjacent to the church, we'll have a family picnic, brats, hamburgers, hot dogs, coleslaw, chips, veggie tray, cake, and ice cream, lemonade, coffee, and water. Everyone is welcome to attend. Please come help us welcome the new priest and also celebrate St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence Feast Day is on Monday. That's a big day for us. So tomorrow night we'll celebrate that in uh, anticipation. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth the Mass is Thanks be to God. Please join in singing, O Bless the Lord, number 550, number 550.